what you're about to see is Brianna Keller's explanation and opinion about Nikki Haley's trying to blame the media for the civil war that's going on in the Republican Party. And you'll get my final thoughts later. Since the insurrection, Nikki Haley's hot takes will spin you right round baby right round like a record baby right round round round. They are so all over the place, they are dizzying. And now Haley is debuting a new one. The former ambassador to the UN in the Trump administration and former governor of South Carolina wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. And she claims that it's really the media that is responsible for the Grand Canyon size divide bisecting the GOP. She writes this. The liberal media wants to stoke a nonstop Republican civil war. The media playbook starts with the demand that everyone pick sides about Donald Trump, either love or hate everything about him. That moment anyone on the right offers the slightest criticism of the 45th president, the media goes berserk. Republicans are trying to have it both ways. It's a calculated strategy to pit conservatives against one another. So that is her claim. As if Republicans require assistance in picking sides when it comes to Trump. There's no question that the president formed the mob, the president incited the mob, the president addressed the mob, he lit the flame. That is Looney Tunes, and you know why they're saying that? Because if the president didn't know, and it was actually pre-planned, he's not guilty. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president. How do you incite a riot that was already planned? How do you uh, incite a breach of the Capitol that happened before the president even completed his speech? And how does, how can you charge the president with inciting uh, violence at the Capitol when he told the people at the rally to peacefully and patriotically make their voices heard? The president has disregarded his oath of office. He swore an oath to the American people to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. He acted against that. What he did was wicked. I don't believe he provoked if you listen to what he said at the rally. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. Haley says the media wants to stoke a Republican civil war. Stoke it how? By telling Americans that it's happening? What Republicans on either side of this divide are saying? Perhaps there would be no civil war if the media would just stop documenting it? The 10 House Republicans who voted to impeach Trump. How conservative House members tried to oust one of them, Liz Cheney, from the House GOP leadership how seven Republicans voted to convict Donald Trump in his impeachment in the Senate, how state parties censured many of these lawmakers despite the fact that Trump left the White House in disgrace and was the first president in almost three decades not to win a second term. There is a civil war. The GOP is eating its own, casting out good people as it kowtows to conspiracy theorists. And the media ignoring that it's happening won't make Mitt Romney and Josh Hawley somehow agree on the existential questions facing their party. Nikki Haley is trying to have it both ways. She says that the pre-Trump Republican Party is over. Quote, most of Mr. Trump's major policies were outstanding and made America stronger, safer, and more prosperous. Many of his actions since the election were wrong and will be judged harshly by history. That's not a contradiction, it's common sense. And she says having it both ways is the only way forward for the party, when in fact she's been having it all the ways since January 6th. The day after the attack, she said this at a meeting of the RNC, quote, President Trump has not always chosen the right words. He was wrong with his words in Charlottesville, and I told him so at the time. He was badly wrong with his words yesterday. And it wasn't just his words. His actions since Election Day will be judged harshly by history. Well, in this latest op-ed, Haley writes that she will, quote, gladly defend the bulk of the Trump record and his determination to shake up the corrupt status quo in Washington. I will never defend the indefensible. I didn't do that when I served alongside President Trump, and I'm not going to start now, she says. Well, she actually can't start now because she already started weeks ago. They beat him up before he got into office. They're beating him up after he leaves office. I mean, at some point, I mean, give the man a break. I mean, move on. So she changed her tune, acting like Trump was the victim, which is one of his very favorite yarns to spin. She goes on in an interview with Politico, quote, I understand the president. I understand that genuinely to his core, he believes he was wronged. This is not him making it up. And the reporter asks her, 
You have the president of the United States telling everyone that he was cheated, that the voting systems are corrupt, that we're living in a banana republic where the deep state has rigged this election against him. Isn't that dangerous? And Haley rep replies, quote, he believes it. Well, that's ridiculous. He was and is making it up. It's all a lie. He knows it because the courts told him, voters told him, reality told him over and over and over again. His team and his allies lost nearly 60 cases having to do with the election. So yeah, he knows it, he just doesn't care. Haley zigzags through this op-ed. She says, quote, if the media gets, it, gets its way, the GOP will dissolve into endless warfare, ensuring extreme liberal government for years to come. And also this, what's good for the media is bad for America. Some never Trump and always Trump Republicans also attack anyone who doesn't join the all or nothing chorus. Well, if there is one thing in 2021 that is all or nothing, it was the deadly attack against democracy on January 6th. If you're a lawmaker who was in that building that day, you should know better that there aren't two ways to honestly look at an armed surrection that required you to hide in fear of your life. Hiding from people who literally stalked the hallways looking for the Republican vice president. The president and his allies lied to millions of Americans for two months, falsely saying the election was stolen and that he won. A lie he's still pushing. Those lies sent people to Washington riled up, ready to literally and figuratively act on the myth that the election could be overturned by Mike Pence. When they got to D.C., Donald Trump egged them on, giving them a pregame pep talk. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. And after this, we're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. Nikki Haley also says this in this op-ed, Mr. Trump brought millions of new voters into the Republican Party, for which he deserves great credit, but the party also lost millions of voters. Well, that's like saying you lost 10 pounds, but you also gained 15, which is something that a few of us are familiar with stuck in the house during COVID, am I right? You don't get credit for it. Wouldn't that be nice if you did? Nikki Haley may be constructing her own basic laws of math because of that. She goes on in this op-ed, quote, Mr. Trump's legal team failed to prove mass election fraud in court, but election security is still urgently needed. If you have to show photo ID to buy Sudafed or get on a plane, you should have to show photo ID when voting in person or by mail. Voting is a constitutionally protected right. Buying Sudafed isn't. Getting on a plane isn't. These are very different things. And there is no widespread voter fraud in this country, period. Not in the states where voter ID laws are championed by Republicans. But you know what there is in those states? Black people, brown people, people the trend toward the Democratic Party. Nikki Haley knows many people feel voter ID laws are racially motivated and have the effect of suppressing their votes, even if these requirements sound perfectly harmless the way that she describes them. Which brings us to another Republican politician whose sensitivity on race issues stands in contrast to Nikki Haley's. Nikki Haley. It's time to move the flag from the Capitol grounds. This is a moment in which we could say that that flag while an integral part of our past does not represent the future of our great state. That appears to be the same version of Nikki Haley who said this about Donald Trump in the Politico interview, quote, I don't think he's going to be in the picture. I don't think he can. He's fallen so far. We need to acknowledge he let us down. He went down a path he shouldn't have, and we shouldn't have followed him, and we shouldn't have listened to him, and we can't let that ever happen again. Well, behold it happening again. Steve Scalise, the latest House Republican leader, going to kiss the ring at Mar-a-Lago. Fox allowing Trump on its air to keep lying about what caused the insurrection in the first place. And all but seven senators giving Trump a pass for his role in the insurrection. Your party is at a crisis point, Ambassador. You want to keep kicking the can down both sides of the road, ignoring reality, until what? You look up and see the crowd of people walking with you is dense with white supremacists? dense with cravenly ambitious politicians who jettisoned their morals miles back, several clicks after they left fiscal conservative town and family valuesville without so much as a look back. It is a long road through the wilderness, especially with your eyes closed. Now, real quickly, here's my reaction to this. Nikki Haley, first off, whatever respect I had 
You know what? You lost my respect the second you became one of Trump's whores. And I don't mean in the sexual way. You're breaking your back trying to say that the media is responsible for the, for the civil war in the GOP. The media is responsible? Well, I will say that Fox News may be. Uh, ONN, One American News is. Newsmax might be, but when it comes to CNN and other other um, other news outlets, they're not responsible for it. The Republican Party is, and they had the perfect chance of ending that civil war in the Republican Party by convicting Trump, and you guys did not do that. And instead, you got Trump out there on on Fox News and wherever whoever else will hear him. Continually to, to continue the lie that he didn't lose the election. Continue the lie that it was rigged. Honestly, what exactly did you think was going to happen? When I mean, you guys, when the Republican Party didn't um, convict him. And as for the Republicans who keep saying that Donald Trump did, didn't, um, that he didn't incite the insurrection. You're, you're the Republican horse too. You're his horse, just like Nikki Haley. As I said, I had respect for her when she took down the Confederate flag off her state when she was um, governor of South Carolina. I thought she was the, going to be the only voice of reason in the Trump in the Trump regime when she was appointed the ambassador to the United States to the U to the U.S. That didn't happen. She became a Trumper. The fact is, the, the reason why the GOP is at a civil war point at this point in time is because the Republican Party won't break itself of Donald Trump. You heard, you've been hearing people like Lindsey Graham saying Donald Trump is the, is the future of the Republican Party. Saying that Laura Trump, his daughter, who's probably going to run for office sooner or later, that she's the, she's the future of the Republican Party. That you're still screaming that Donald Trump's going to be back in 2024. That you're worried that Trump, that the civil war that's happening in the GOP is going to cost them in 2022. The civil war isn't made by the media. Not the Democrats, not Joe Biden, not Kamala Harris, not anyone in the Biden administration. Not, not anybody. The poison in the GOP is completely on the GOP side. So Nikki, I would stop right now making yourself look like an idiot. Because quite frankly, whatever respect I had for you when you took down the Confederate flag is gone. It's gone. It's finished. And in closing, I want to show you this video clip right here. It seems that Rafael Cruz is on his way back from Cancun after he got caught. Don't make, make no mistake about this. He's not coming back to Texas because he did wrong. He's not going back to Texas because he he was wrong and he and he wants to help the people of Texas. He's coming back to Texas because he got caught. And he tried again, as I said in the earlier video, he tried again to use his kids as an excuse, like the scumbag coward he is. Just tell the truth for once, Cruz, Rafael, tell the truth. You don't care about what's going on in Texas, you don't care about what's happening to the people of Texas. You know what? Play the clip. Well, Texas is going through uh, horrific storms, and millions of Texans have lost power, have lost heat, and have been hurt. And uh, our, our family was among them. We had no heat and no power. And uh, yesterday, my daughters asked if they could take a trip with some friends, and Heidi and I agreed, so I flew down with them last night, uh, dropped them off here, and now I'm headed back to Texas and back to continuing to work 
to try to get the power on. What's happening in Texas is unacceptable and a lot of Texans are hurting. So what's it going to be, Cruz? What's it going to be, Raphael? You're going to continue this BS campaign, spreading the word of Trump, hoping that he'll probably give you give you his endorsement in 2024 if he doesn't run, which he probably will. But then by then it will be already too late. If that's what this whole thing is about, uh, Cruz, if this is your your chance to somehow one-up Donald Trump in this inhumanity, mission accomplished. And that little stun of yours, this guy had a fully loaded suitcase carrying on. You don't pack something like that if you're just dropping someone off. You got caught, Trump. Oh my God, I was about to call you Trump. Maybe you want me to call you Trump. Maybe your name should be Ted Rafael Cr uh, Cruz. Maybe your name should be Ted Rafael Trump. Maybe that's what you're trying to do. But it ain't gonna happen. I am formally calling for your resignation, Rafael Cruz. And dare I say, you're not the only Republican I want out of the Congress and out of the White House. I got a whole list of uh, Republicans that I'm going to talk about in these videos. Once a week, I'm gonna talk about every Republican that let Donald Trump off the hook, that stabbed this country in the back, that let a terrorist attack go unpunished. You're gonna hate my guts for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna love the fact that you hate my guts for it. I don't care anymore. You enabled a terrorist attack. Now, I could probably walk away from that because you're a Trump whore, like Nikki Haley and the rest of the Republicans, but what you did, walking away from a disaster, and when you get caught, you get caught, you try to reverse yourself and say, I'm on my way back, I'm going to help people. You got caught, Raphael. You got caught. Fact is this, Raphael, you can stay in office and get voted out in disgrace. And you think that this isn't going to stay in the minds of citizens of Texas? The citizens are not hardcore Trump supporters or hardcore Republicans? We're gonna use the next few years until your next election campaign, and we're gonna use this right here as is for the reason why you need to be thrown out of your seat in the Senate. And you shouldn't be trusted with any office of government ever again. If you think that, and if you take that as some kind of a threat, go right ahead. Because I didn't threaten you. I'm gonna make sure, but I just only said that I'm gonna campaign against you. Every single time you speak, whether it's on, on Twitter or live, I'm going to be there to pick you apart piece by piece. You're going to learn that what you did to Texas is not forgiven nor forgotten. And that goes for the rest of you Republican and whores who stabbed this country in the back by not, not, by not punishing a terrorist attack, by trying to lie about what happened in Texas today in the, the last few days during the snow, the storm, when people lost their power, lost the possibility of losing food, who are shivering in the dark, who are probably risking health, health problems by, by, by lighting up grills to keep themselves warm in their house. You 
disgust me, Cruz. But don't worry. You're gonna get warm very quickly, Cruz. Because I hear the temperature in hell is hot. Oh, and while you're there, no, I'm not even gonna go there. I can't go there. That was that was wrong of me. But sooner or later, Cruz, you're going to be called to account for this. I promise you. In God's honest truth, I would face the cold that those men and women, those families in Texas that you walked away from, that what's going to happen to you when you called, when you're called to account. CTP, know the truth, God bless. Peace to the left, justice to the right.